So I was just in bed just literally like 10 minutes ago, and I was actually just going to bed to go to sleep. I wasn't just waking up or anything, and I was laying there thinking, what am I going to do for my next personal video? And I, I just I couldn't really decide what I wanted to do earlier. I was thinking, okay, you know what? I could do Rage. Mm, that would be good. I suppose it'd be kind of short. I don't know. Maybe it would be long. Uh, I could do stuff about friends and brothers growing up. Or I could think about doing uh, stuff about my disorders, my disabilities and stuff that actually are the reasons why I have SSI. And so I was laying in there and I was thinking, you know, what would I be able to say about my disorders, my personality disorders, my sleep disorder, uh, the reasons I have SSI, what would I be able to say about this stuff? Uh, how would I articulate it properly? And I started thinking stuff up, and so that's what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, anyone that doesn't like listening to uh, personal information about some random dude online that <laughs> they probably don't really give a shit about, uh, this probably isn't the video for you, but if you do want to uh, listen, you're probably interested in what I have to say about my having a free-running circadian rhythm, sleep disorder, and uh, a schizotypal personality disorder, and a schizoid personality disorder, uh, you can go ahead and stick around and listen. But anyone else that doesn't really care about those, uh, I guess you can just leave for now. Uh, of course, this video isn't going to have any actual footage. It's just going to be text saying there's no f uh, no footage or anything, blah. So just feel free to minimize the browser and play a game or something. Or continue doing whatever you're doing and just listen with it minimized. And I guess let's begin. So uh, my uh, sleep disorder, really what it is, is I am on a 26 and a half hour sort of sleep wake uh, basically, a 26 and a half hour daily schedule. Uh, most people are on around a 23 to 24 hour sleep wake day time schedule, and they're able to easily adjust when they're awake and stuff. But for me, it's quite a bit different, and most people require eight hours of sleep. Like adults, I mean, uh, younger people and uh, people over a certain age require more than eight hours, but most normal average people at my age require eight hours of sleep or so. I happen to be different and I actually require around 10 to 12 hours of sleep and not only do I require that much sleep but after about 12 hours of being awake I also start getting tired so after being up for 12 to 14 hours I end up going to sleep so what ends up happening is I'll sleep for 12 hours uh, 10 to 12 hours then I'll be awake for 12 to 14 hours and it just really sucks so every day uh, on, when my sleep is actually on a normal a sort of schedule a normal schedule for me at least one that makes it so I can actually anticipate when I'm going to be awake when and I can deal with like figuring out when I have to go to certain appointments and doing stuff that needs to be done, I have to think, okay, every day I'm awake two hours later than the previous day. So if I wake up five in the morning, I'll be awake seven in the morning the next day, then uh, nine in the morning after that, then 11 in the morning after that, and just so on and so forth. And also being asleep two hours later. So if I go to sleep, Two or at 8 p.m. one night. The next night I'll be going to sleep at 10 p.m. Then at midnight. Then at 2 a.m. It just continues on. So sometimes I'll be eating breakfast when people are eating dinner, but other times I'll be eating dinner when people are eating dinner. Just normal. And it's a little bit weird sometimes because I'll be eating my dinner when people are eating their breakfast or eating my dinner around the time that people are just waking up at like 5 or 6 in the morning before they even eat breakfast. And that's, that's really weird, and that's actually something that's impossible for me to get a job anywhere. It's just because of that sleep scheduling uh, that it, I just require that much sleep. And my sleep is just suggested, actually. I went to sleep doctors and stuff when I was in high school, and they actually suggested that it is healthier and safer not to wake me up when I was in school. So when I was actually in school, falling asleep all the time, people would wake me up all the time saying, okay, you got to stay awake, or do you want to go for a walk or something, or, or whatever. And eventually, 
they were told, if I fall asleep in class, just let me sleep in class because I need that sleep. And that's one reason why I had to drop out of high school. Uh, I, I was so far behind and everything. I knew that even if I stayed until I was 21, even though I'm 24 now, I've been out of school for, I don't remember how many years, but quite a few already, obviously, since I'm 24. So even if I stayed until I was 21, I was like, okay, you know what? There is no way I'm going to actually graduate. It's just, it's not possible. It's not happening. So I ended up dropping out because my sleep, it just made it really hard. There's other reasons too, but we'll get to that in a different video. My personality disorders are actually something that people are never aware of until I actually tell them. They'll realize like, okay, I am just a computer guy. I don't really go anywhere a whole lot. I'm a big dude and I don't really get exercise. I don't like going and being around people, but... When I actually explain to them, oh, I have personality disorders. I don't like going around people because it's super stressful. It's like, oh, well, uh, okay, well, that's cool. And then other people, I'll be like, okay, I have a schizotypal personality disorder and a schizoid personality disorder. And the only reason that I have both of those, even though it's apparently impossible to have those two in combination with each other at the same time, uh, the reason I have those two is because one is most likely genetic. And it's probably genetic because my dad's sister actually has uh, schizophrenia. And the genetic form of one of those personality disorders, I don't remember which one. I don't feel like looking it up. You can look them up if you want. Uh, one of them, the genetic form, can turn to schizophrenia. And his sister's daughter also has that same personality disorder that I have. And her, uh, like his sister also used to have that but eventually became schizophrenic. So there is that fear of it turning schizophrenic, but I don't think I really have to worry about that. I'm hoping I don't, at least it's just, it's something that's there and would kind of suck if I do have to worry about it. So I guess there's that at least. And whenever people actually hear me say, or I tell them, I mean, I guess, about schizotypal and schizoid personality disorders, they're just like, wait, what is it, like schizophrenia or something? And they're all, like, close, but it's like, no, no, it's not. It's the schizo part that kind of gets them. I'm making it like, oh, is that, like, are you crazy or something? Do you, like, hallucinate? I'm like, no, I don't. But it's something, for me, what it does really is it makes it so I do not like going anywhere, going places, speaking to people. It causes insane amounts of stress, so much that imagine you are perfectly healthy, you're fine and everything, you're excited to go to a concert, then you go there, and because of these disabilities, when you get there, it's so crowded, you actually, despite it being a rock concert, a Rush concert actually, because this actually happened to me, uh, despite it being a Rush concert, a really loud rock concert, you go in there and the stress is so bad, it actually makes you sick. And not only does it make you sick, but you actually start to fall asleep. And you do fall asleep during that concert. That loud concert, you fall asleep during it. And you're just horribly sick the entire time. And you have to stay there with thousands of people around you. And you still feel alone. Even though there's thousands of people around you, you feel alone. And that's, that's pretty much how it is for me. I always feel alone because even though I like to be alone, I'm still human. I still have that human nature side of me. I still feel emotion. I still feel the stuff that you need to feel. I, I don't really feel a lot of it as much as normal people do, but I still feel loneliness. And that's something that it, if you think about it, you're someone who wants to be alone, but you can feel the loneliness. So you're living alone all the time. When you're around people, you feel alone. But when you're actually alone, you still feel alone. You're always alone. It's like some cycle you can never break out of. You're just always there. You're always alone. You're always different. You want to be normal, but you can't. You're different. You're always alone, and it sucks. And that's just what I have to deal with all the time. My hair is a perfect example. Right now, my hair is so long it has exceeded the halfway point down my back because I don't like going out places 
I do not like the stress of getting a haircut. A normal person for a haircut is like, oh, what hairstyle should I get? Ooh, I should get this. That looks cool. And then they speak to the barber as they're getting their haircut. And it's, it's like no big deal. But for me, it's a huge deal. For me, for me, it's, 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 it's just like, okay, I got to find out where the picture of me is, where I have my haircut in just the perfect way I want it. Are the barbers going to screw up the haircut? Are they going to get it just right? Are they going to talk to me? Are they going to uh, comment on my red hair? Are they going to try and comment on how thick my hair is? Because I have a lot of hair in a small area. Like, uh, the amount of hair strands per inch is larger than average, I guess you could say. Are they going to say all this stuff? Is this going to be a pain in the ass? It's just all these things running through my head, just building up stress constantly. And then being out in a public area, other people in this uh, place. Are these people staring at me? Are they looking at me? Are they thinking things about me? Are they thinking or anything negative? Are they thinking anything positive? What are they thinking? What are they doing? Why are they looking at me? What is going on? Why do I feel this pressure on my skin why do i feel like people's eyes are touching me why do i feel like my skin is turned to lead and weighing me down and that is just something that i hate and that that just holds me back and be makes me be alone even more it keeps me here at home all the time i've expanded so much in the last few years though because before when I first started doing commentary on YouTube, I decided I was going to use that to try and make it so I could speak better. And I can speak better to people because even though I still stutter a little bit, it was nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Back then, I barely had any commentary. I stuttered when speaking to people all the time because there's so much stress. And when I was going in to get SSI, the judge, because I had to go to court for it, obviously... To get SSI because there's some long thing and eventually shit happened. And uh, so when I went there, the judge actually asked me how I managed in school for so long with the sleep disorder and my personality disorders that I had. And I didn't have an answer for him. I, I actually broke down and cried and he stopped and just asked me if I needed to leave the room. And after a few seconds, I said no. And few more seconds, I got myself together, and I just, I told him I didn't know, because I really didn't know the answer. I didn't know how I was able to make it through school, and be around people the way I was, and speak to them, and deal with all the pressure and the stress, with it building up anger, and hatred, and feeling alone all the time, and feeling like people just hate me, and treat me like shit all the time, because people did treat me like shit. And just not liking people in general. And knowing that just coming home isn't going to solve the problem either. Because growing up, I didn't grow up in some perfect household. I grew up with my dad being a complete jackass. He knows that he admits to it. He knows he did something wrong then. It wasn't, it wasn't a good situation I was in. And still dealing with all that, it, it sucks. And I can remember stuff now. I actually... This is another thing I want to talk about here is memories have also been coming back. So memories in the past for me, it, it's it's sort of like the memories I've been having is sort of along the lines of super nostalgia, super nostalgia as in uh, I don't know if that is actually what you would call it. It's probably more surreal nostalgia or something. Uh, the best way I can explain it is it's someone who's been through some traumatic event where they block out all these memories, and these memories will actually come back. But when they come back, it's like you're reliving the entire situation. So you feel it, you taste, you hear, you see, all your five senses are working with this memory, and you're reliving every memory, every second of that memory. It's like you're there still. It's like you're there again. And I've been having that happen over the last half a year or something, but it wasn't for bad things. It was for good things. And it just makes me realize, you know what? I'm here every day and half of the time I'm awake. I'm awake when no one else is. I have no one to speak to. All I have to do is entertain myself in order 
prevent myself from going freaking crazy because I have no one. There's just, it's not nice. It's lonely. People are asleep when I'm awake. And other times when I'm awake, people are working because they are having jobs. Most of my friends are my age or within a year or two of my age. So they all have jobs. They have college. They have shit they're doing. They don't have time to go and play games or do stuff that little kids would do. Like I did when I was growing up. Playing games with friends and my brothers. You just can't do that as an adult. And it just it forces me to be more alone every day. It sucks. Just because of those personality disorders. I can't go out in public. I can't do things that I want to do and even the things I want to do when I actually think about it when I try to actually go in and get those done most of the time I end up being like I really don't want to do this why am I doing this why should I bother I don't care about it it's too much effort it's too much work I don't want to do anything I just want to relax and not do anything I just I just I don't know I hate being out in public and yet some of the best memories I have from my childhood is being out in public but the reason for that is because I was with my brothers and I honestly think the one person in the world who understands me the most even though he probably doesn't know it is my younger brother his last barbecue I ended up going to and he didn't expect me to show up and he actually told my mom that he was glad I went, and of course I went because he's my brother, and it was hard for me to do because there were people there I didn't know, and there was time when I was there where I was actually trying to get some food because it's barbecue, obviously I was hungry, I didn't eat dinner or anything before going over, and that was supposed to be my dinner, and I went in the house to get some food, and I was I grabbed the plate, and I started looking for the, the tongs to pick up food and put it on my plate and I, I saw my brother's girlfriend in the kitchen and she was speaking to with a friend they knew I was there and I was just I didn't want to ask them where the tongs were I didn't want to ask them for help or anything I, I was just I stood in there and I looked like I wasn't needing anything I just acted like I didn't need anything for so for like five minutes I stood in there just basically walking in circles, acting like I had everything I needed and I didn't need any help. Then my brother walked in and, and he saw me and immediately he knew and he uh, said, oh, sorry about that. And he grabbed the tongs and he gave them to me. I was, just said, thanks. Like it was nothing and put the chicken on my plate and everything and all the stuff I needed. And it's just, it's really hard accepting Help from people is also in the same area. Just asking for help, doing stuff, it's a pain in the ass. And it's like you can never really understand. In order to feel truly alone, try and imagine yourself in the situation I was in when I was at that Rush concert. Try and imagine being surrounded by thousands of people screaming and cheering for a band that you like. Uh, a concert you were excited to go to but then you get there and everyone around you is happy and excited and you're just you're miserable you're just you're really fucking miserable and you're sick because of it and you're not enjoying it you're not having a good time and you just want to leave every single second that goes by feels like an hour and you just want to leave. You just want to go home and go to sleep. But you're there for several hours. It's just like torture. And it's stuff that I can't do. I can push myself to a limit like I've done with my YouTube channel so far. I can allow myself to open up to a certain degree to some people if I've known them for a long time. But I can never really be myself even when I'm alone. I can't open up to myself because... Then there's always still that one person watching. And that one person watching is still myself. And I'm just always alone. And I cannot ever really be understood. But despite all that, I still have to continue pretending everything is okay. I have to continue every single day and just act 
like the good strong guy that I at sometimes appear to be. I have to just behave as normal as I possibly can and never let anyone think about it and or worry about it. I know in my videos I sound really really open and really really hyper but honestly that's just because I'm used to it now. Uh, when I started out doing that and I actually started pushing myself, uh, the first videos I did commentary on uh, for the first year or so, even probably even the first two years of my commentary, simply recording would make me so tired and so weak that I would feel like going to sleep. I would feel like I was going to pass out even though I recorded right after I got up, like two or three hours after I woke up at the time where I'm most awake during the day. And I've just gotten so used to it now that I can do that and I don't feel that tired. I feel a little tired after recording. Yeah, sure. I don't think I'm ever going to not feel a little tired from recording, but it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be just because I kept trying. And despite that, there's going to still be areas where I can never go to concerts. I can never go out in public without feeling some incredible amounts of stress. I can never do a lot of stuff normal people do. And I can never stop feeling alone. It's not possible. All I can do is continue trying to be me. All I can do is continue trying to be normal. All I can do is continue trying to be the best that I can be. And that's what I try and do every single day. The only way I'm able to continue doing that every day and just never lose the strength to continue doing that, though, is to just allow myself to feel like shit every night before I go to sleep. If I happen to have uh, feelings where I feel like shit just rise up, then I can't just block them out. I have to allow myself to feel that because I get too tired to try and deal with it all the time. And... I have to allow myself to feel that, otherwise I wouldn't be able to continue the next day and repeat the same process of just trying to ignore the fact that I am different and there's stuff that I can't do. Trying to just live a normal life and try and live despite being as alone as I am and really as boring as I am in all I really do all day is I record, I play games, and I watch stuff. That's it. There's almost no interaction with people. Sometimes there's no interaction at all, and I can just continue doing the best that I can, and I don't think that's ever going to change.